Hope you guys have enjoyed the previous videos by learning in and out of collection framework. Now it's time to learn about another beautiful concepts and interesting topic in Java, which is multi-threading. I heard from many developers saying that multi-threading is one of the toughest topic in Java. The reason behind that is people think like, okay, it is developed by Oracle Java team where it is core level, the language level, and it is very difficult to understand the concepts, how it is actually working internally. So I have taken the toughest topic and split into multiple videos and want to go in and out of each concepts in multi-threading. And I want to make you guys feel comfortable in terms of like before appear for any interview as well as coding. And also I will go through with the real time programming. So you guys will understand where we really use multi-threading in our real time programming in our client place. video we are going to learn about what is deadlock condition in java and why it occurs in java and actually we are going to see how we can able to prevent the deadlock condition in java and i am going to explain with a simple example so that you guys can correlate with deadlock condition in the real time uh, example versus java program and also we are going to see what is starvation in java and what is difference between deadlock and starvation as always i want to explain the same thing by writing a code and i am going to demonstrate how the deadlock condition occurs in java without any further delay let's get started now let's start with what is deadlock in java so basically deadlock is a condition in which more than one thread actually waiting for each other forever what does it mean so let's say i have two threads right uh, let's say each are uh, trying to communicate each other but for some reason uh, it is not able to communicate properly and so that both the threads are in waiting state and they're waiting for each other so let's say i have two threads let's say t1 and t2 and two threads are waiting in the same state like waiting state but they're waiting for each other but they don't know how or when they're going to you know uh, notify because like they don't know where, where, how, for how long they have to wait so in that condition they call it as uh, deadlock so deadlock the other terminology they call it as a race condition basically it is nothing but if two threads are waiting for each other forever forever means without any uh, defined uh, time so if two threads are waiting for each other for uh, like infinitely or or uh, infinite loop so then it means like it is called deadlock condition and why it is actually occurs so as we've seen see, so far in the previous videos, uh, in a multi-threaded environment, we can use synchronized keyword in order to get the lock of an object and then do our stuff, right? So without a lock, uh, no other threads can able to uh, access that particular object. And basically this is going to resolve uh, the data inconsistency problem. But at the same time, if you don't know how to use the synchronized keyword in a Java, if you use uh, in a place where it is not required, then that will uh, make uh, the deadlock condition. So I'm going to write a program where I'm going to use a synchronous keyword in a place and which makes each threads waiting for each other and uh, they're not able to process for, for further. So that's where it's a problem. So basically the root cause for the deadlock condition is nothing but misuse or misusing the synchronous keyword in Java. If you don't use it properly, then that will create a deadlock condition and how we are going to prevent it. So as a developer, only if you know the real purpose of synchronous keyword and where we should use and where we should not use, and what is the scenario we should not use it that is how you have to be very clear by using the synchronous keyword as required so how we can prevent this nothing but to don't use a synchronous keyword unnecessarily if you don't think that it is necessary to use a synchronous keyword better don't use that now let me go with an example of how the deadlock condition occurs in java let's say there are like two people let's say you and your friend are actually placing an order in amazon and then uh, you guys are placing an order in Amazon and then let's say you are placing an uh, iPhone 1 and the, your friend is actually placing an order iPhone 2. Let's say uh, you guys are uh, getting a notification from Amazon saying that, you know, your order has been dispatched and you guys can get it from your courier office. Let's say I have a P1 and there is a P2. So this person P1 is you and then person P2 is your friend. And let's say the person P1 actually orders object 1 and person P2 actually orders object 2. This is the courier office. And once you guys, uh, once you place an order, um, object one, you got uh, order ID for object one, which is nothing but a lock of this particular object. And similarly, P2, your friend also got an order ID for object two, which is nothing but the lock of object two. When I say lock, what does it mean? So when you want to access that particular object, this courier guy will uh, cross check, right? Whether you really place that order, uh, whether you have an object uh, order ID for that particular order, right? So courier guy will look for the object ID, the order ID for the object one, and similarly, if when P2 guy goes, then he will verify whether this P2 guy has the order ID of this particular object too, right? So what happens here is there is one, uh, where there is a problem here. I'm going to create a problem. As a developer, I'm going to create a problem. Saying that, let's say P1 says, hey, I am not going to um, uh, get my order. 
instead of what we can do is we will exchange it so let's say i am going to a courier office and i will get your order like which is object 2 and you go to the courier office and you will pick up the object 1 so what he is saying okay you can give me the order id of this object 2 and this guy says okay no problem i can share the object uh, order id of object 2 similarly you can share me the order id of object 1 this is how they communicated and then what they did is like this guy goes to this courier office to pick up the object 1 sorry object 2 and this guy goes to the courier office to pick up the object 1 but this guy p1 is still waiting to get the order id of this object 2 from p2 this guy p2 the person 2 actually waiting in the courier office to get the order id of object 1 from p1 but they are thinking that they are going to share it but they are still waiting for the same uh, for very very long time without having any different time they are waiting for forever so this particular condition is nothing but uh, called um, a deadlock condition so here uh, if two threads so here thread is t1 p1 is t1 and p2 is t2 if two threads are waiting for each other to get the lock uh, forever so this condition basically we call it as deadlock condition so let me write the same program into a uh, java program the same scenario basically we have person 1 person 2 and uh, within that i have uh, written some method like m1 m1 and here i am making this uh, m1 as synchronized what does it mean so if anyone wants to access this m1 so they should have a lock of this particular object right so this is my uh, main program basically this is a courier program basically i am creating new uh, objects for p1 and p2 person 1 p1 is equal to new person 1 of similarly person 2 p2 is equal to new person 2 of then what i am doing is these two are threads so i am going to uh, start the thread so by using like p1 dot start p2 dot start what i am doing here is inside p1 inside the person 1 i am creating an object of person 2 and then i am passing that person 2 and then i am calling the method 1 of person 2 by passing this methods this this class object if you guys see here this is the first to p1 here and this is this is p2 so inside person 1 i am calling p2's m1 method and by passing p1 similarly the other way around here inside person 2 i am calling the synchronized m1 within the m1 method i am calling p1's m1 method by passing this this is nothing but p2 here this is p1 okay so what happens here is so here this thread actually waiting for this one this thread is waiting for this one to get the lock because this is all synchronized so what happens is when i say p1 dot m1 of p2 so p1 is nothing but person 1 so person 1's m1 method so this is m1 method right so in this m1 method i am passing p2 so p2 is nothing but the object p2 right so this p2 i am passing here but this is synchronized method so what it will do is it has to get the lock in order to access it so let's say it getting the lock of p2 and then it is getting so calling like p2.m1 of this one so let's say calling this one but internally this is its lock right so it's actually waiting for each other but without any having any particular time waiting time so this particular condition they call it as deadlock so output when you when you run this program in the runtime i'm going to see some uh, deadlock uh, condition uh, stack overflow exception will come i will, I will go in, uh, i'm going to demonstrate that one but you guys have to understand what is deadlock or race condition deadlock or race condition in java is nothing but if two threads are waiting for each other forever it means there is a deadlock condition there is another concept in java which is called starvation so what do you mean by starvation so starvation means let's say uh, i want to demo i want to give you a practical example uh, let's say starvation and uh, deadlock kind of similar but there is a difference the reason is that let's say deadlock means nothing but like you cannot come back meaning like it's a kind of dead body right they it cannot come back live but starvation is something but like a patient right so a patient is something but like you know they are getting uh, treatment but they will get recover but it will take some time that's the only difference between uh, deadlock and starvation so in terms of java the starvation means let's say you are having your problem let's say you are having like a uh, 100 threads okay out of 100 threads let's say one thread you are having a priority let's say one and then remaining threads you are having a priority let's say 50 sorry 10 okay so what will happen is uh, the jvm will look for the priority of the threads and then it will go into process it right allocate the process for that so here the thread one which is having the priority one is definitely going to execute but it will have to wait till all the remaining 19 threads has to execute right so here this thread t1 has to wait but it has to wait only till the time uh, of all the remaining 91 gets executed but definitely is going to get a chance but in case of deadlock both the threads are not going to get a chance because it's like waiting for each other without knowing uh, what to do next right so without having a lock it is waiting so this is the difference between deadlock and starvation that is the reason i was telling deadlock is kind of like a dead body and the starvation is nothing but like kind of a person is uh, getting treatment as a patient right so the person the patient in a hospital can get recovered but uh, 
the dead lag once uh, you know dead body like you cannot come back right so that's a difference between dead lag and starvation and if anyone ask any question regarding to dead lag in your program uh, in your java entry or any uh, programming so you guys can think about this uh, terminology in terms of like two person is picking up the order without knowing the order id so that's a condition where it occurs in the real time programming i'm going to run the same program in my clips and i'm going to show how the output is going to come back with uh, the dead lag uh, stack overflow uh, runtime exception hello guys here is the practical session where we are going to learn about how to create a deadlock situation in java coding so uh, as i mentioned the theoretical session so deadlock condition occurs whenever there is uh, two threads are waiting for each other to release their locks and it is not going to happen at all and when the two threads are waiting for each other forever then that is a condition we call it as deadlock or race condition so now let's see how it actually works in the program so basically what i did here is i just carry on class called courier where i have a main method so within that i have created a object of person 1 and person 2 so i have two classes called person 1 person 2 for this classes i create an object p1 and p2 so what is this p1 and p2 this is nothing but the threaded classes so which is nothing but public class person 1 extends thread and then here what i did here is i have a method called m1 which i made it as synchronized and wherein i need a passing uh, object of p2 and then i'm going to call p2's m1 method so what is p2 p2 is another uh, person which is like extending threads which is like extends thread here also i have a method called m1 which is also synchronized and wherein i'm passing the object of p1 and i'm calling p1's m1 of this which is nothing but p1 dot m1 of p2 because this is nothing but p2 object because this class is nothing but p2 class right person 2 class so what i'm doing here is once I get an object of these two classes, P1 and P2, I'm going to start this P1 and P2. Since P1 and P2 is an object and it extends the class thread, right? So which means like this is a threaded class where I can call the start method. Whenever I call the start method, it is going to make the particular thread into a runnable state. Once the JVM or uh, the scheduler allocates process to the particular thread, which is coming into the running state. So assume that like these threads are get started and now, um, uh, this line is getting executed when you see like line number 13 which will be executed by the main thread right so when the main thread is executing this line number 13 it is going to execute p1 dot m1 of p2 it is simple method call right so p1 is nothing but person 1 so person 1's m1 method it is going to call by passing p2 object so what i'm going here is it is going to execute this piece of code right but if you see here but m1 is declared as synchronized so what it means so whoever wants to execute this particular method m1 they should have a lock of the particular object which is nothing but this object is nothing but person one but if this method is getting called by whom main thread right so main thread is going to acquire the object key of person one and then it is going to execute since no one is actually acquiring using this person one's uh, object's key so uh, the main thread actually got the key and then it is going to execute here so when it comes here m1 so it is passing this p2 and then p2 dot m1 of this so which is nothing but the p2's m1 which is nothing but here so here also this m1 is um, uh, actually declared as synchronous so what does it mean who is going to access this m1 they should need uh, they should have a lock of this object nothing but p2 objects uh, key right so since this is actually called from this particular code this piece of line number eight is called by uh, main thread so then main thread is already have a thread a lock so it is can able to get the lock of this one and then since no one is having a lock of a person 2 so here main thread is getting a lock of a person 2 and it is going to execute here when it comes here p1 dot m1 of this so it is calling p1 of bypassing this object is nothing but p2 object so basically if you guys see notice clearly here the person 1 is actually calling p2's object and person 2 is actually calling p1 subject so this is kind of like you know um, looking for each other without knowing when they're going to address it right so when i say this is a kind of a situation where i can say this is a kind of a you know deadlock situation and that is the reason i won't see this parent uh, statement after this so let me go and execute this one so you guys will understand it yeah you guys can see here it is throwing a deadlock exception exception in the thread main java.lang.stack overflow this main is nothing but the main thread right so where this actual exception happens that is the reason it is showing like in the thread main so this is the name of a thread so because main thread is the one who is actually making call to this one and this is where this exception happens 
and because of these two lines where we are using synchronized for each methods where each method or each thread is waiting for each other to release the locks and it never happens and that is the reason we call it as a deadlock situation i hope you guys have understood this concept this is very very important to understand how the deadlock occurs in any program because uh, in the real time programming when you work for any project in a client place you might see some logs right the error logs or system dot out logs where you will see there are a lot of places where they mention like deadlock uh, exception happen so if you guys want to understand um, or get deeper into uh, how to resolve the deadlock issues the real time programming you should know these basics so these are the actual deadlock occurs um, so if you guys have any question please post your comments in the comment section thank you guys bye bye i hope you guys have understood the concept very clearly but still if you guys have any questions or any clarifications required please post your comments in the comment section and i will be more than happy to assist keep watching all our videos there are a lot more videos to come and if you guys like this video please hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel and share to the friends don't forget to hit the bell icon thanks for watching i will see you in the next interesting video guys